Welcome back, everybody, to Katawa Shoujo. Sho Shoujo. <coughs> Something like that. Uh, yeah, last time we had a heart attack and then a very lengthy, reflective uh, conversation in the doctor's office. And now I guess we're going to a school for disabled students. So let's see how this goes. <coughs> the gate looked far too pompous for what it was. In fact, gates in general seem to do that, but this one especially so. You mock me with your pompousness, Gate. Red bricks, black wrought iron, and gray plaster assembled into a hole that didn't feel welcoming at all. I wondered if it looked like what a gate for a school should look like, but couldn't really decide. Probably no. <clears throat> of course, I didn't want to get stuck on thinking about the gate for too long, so I entered through it with a brisk pace that felt surprisingly good. Moving forward feels so I walked towards the main building of Yamaku Academy with this brisk pace. I'm alone as my parents are taking my stuff to the dorms and there's supposed to be someone waiting for me. The grounds are incredibly lush, filled with green. Green is not the creative color. It doesn't feel like the kind of grounds a school would have, more like a park with a clean walkway going past trees and the smell of fresh cut grass and all the other park-like things. Words like clean and hygienic pop into my mind. It makes me shudder. I shake them off. I shake them off. Stay open-minded now. It's your new life. You have to take it as it comes. That's what I tell myself. The lies I feed myself. A few big buildings loom behind the leafy canopies. Too big and too many for just a school. Everything seems off. It's different from what I thought I knew about schools. It's an uncanny valley. Even though I was told this was my new school, in the back of my head it doesn't feel like one. I wonder if the feeling is real or caused by my expectations of a school for the disabled. Speaking of that, I don't see anyone else here. It's kinda eerie. It makes me wish there was somebody here so I could anchor myself to something tangible instead of having this feeling that I stepped into another dimension. Oh, that's a good time to bring in another character that we can anchor ourselves to. The trees hum with the wind, and the green hues flashing all around me catch my attention. It makes me think about hospitals again. How they say that the operating rooms are painted green because green is a, not a creative color. So why am I feeling so anxious, despite all this greenery? Only after I stand in front of the haughty main building, I surprise myself by realizing why the gate bothered me. It called me a racial slur! It was the last chance I had to turn back, even if I had no life I could return to. But still, after entering, there was absolutely no way I could go back anymore. Feeling nervous, and with this realization set in my head, I open the front door. A tall man with bad posture notices me as I enter. We're the only people in the lobby, so it's only logical. You must be nit not Nikki? Nakai. So you are! Excellent! I'm your homeroom and science teacher. My name is Muta. Welcome! We exchange a handshake that is neither firm nor sloppy, and he looks at his watch. The head nurse asks you for a brief check-in visit, but there is no time for that now. Oh, should I go later? Yeah, this afternoon is probably fine. We should get going and introduce you to the rest of the class. They're waiting already. Waiting for me? I don't really like being the center of attention, but I guess it's inevitable in a situation like this. Somehow, not knowing what is waiting for me makes me feel really nervous. Thinking of this, I almost miss what the teacher is saying. You want to introduce yourself to the class? Yeah, of course I do. Yeah, sure. I mean, isn't that normal? Of course, but not everyone likes to be the center of attention. I'm probably one of those people, but I guess I should be the one to give the first impression of myself. Right, but it's no problem. Let's go then. My heart is pounding in my chest and it keeps me thinking about my condition as I follow the teacher up the stairs. The third door down the third floor corridor... What is... Is this an M&M verse? My god. Is marked as the classroom for class 3-3. Mutoi opens the door and enters. Good morning, everyone. Sorry I'm late again. I had another uh, rager last night, and God, my head is pounding. I hesitate for a split second at the door, freezing on the spot. 
What what is with that like fucking Van Gogh painting at the end of the hallway? My God. Ah, get a grip. This is a big step. I know that, but there isn't any point to worrying so much about it. At least not this soon. Look at all these cute anime people. I follow the teacher into the classroom and look around, partially so I won't have to meet the curious gazes of my new classmates. It's pretty spacious. The ceiling is unusually high and there's a lot of space left over around the in-between- around and in-between the desks. An entire wall taken up by blackboards and the high, old-fashioned windows only make it seem larger. The students' desks are just standard wooden desks with a shelf underneath for books and wooden chairs with metal frames. Um, I'm sorry, I'm not seeing any shelf underneath the desk in the in that picture. Game. Simple and efficient. I stop walking in front of the classroom and face the other students. They all look normal, like students in any other school. But then, why would they be here? They're probably like me and have something wrong with them, only it's just not immediately obvious. Then, I notice that one of the girls seems to be missing the thumb of her right hand. It's a little jarring. <laughs> oh, what, you're missing a thumb? Wow, big deal. Despite the natural tendency to listen when someone's talking about you, I tune out the teacher's speech halfway through while he introduces me to the class. Hey, I said I want to introduce myself. I notice a flash of dark hair and see that someone is looking at me. A girl with really long, straight hair that is pretty eye-catching. As she sees me looking back at her, she covers her face with her hands as if it will make her invisible. There is one boy with a cane leaning against the lockers at the rear of the class. It's, it's, it's weird seeing someone so young with a cane. <laughs> Another girl seems to be making some weird hand motions. Sign language? She peers at me over the rims of her glasses, then goes back to whatever she's doing. She's kinda cute. So is the cheery looking girl with pink hair sitting next to her. She's really hard to miss. <laughs> she's She's got anime pro tag written all over her. I don't know how I didn't notice her the moment I walked in. Please welcome our newest classmate. He claps his hands. So does everyone else except one girl in the first row who has only one hand. <laughs> I cringe a little. But hide it by bowing in thanks for this applause I did not deserve. A collective silence tells me that I should open my mouth now. So, I'm Hisao Nakai. And after that, uh, <clears throat> my hobbies are reading and soccer. I, I hope to get along well with everyone, even even though I'm a, I'm a new student. <clears throat> um, and after that, I'm being so boring. This is exactly like every self introduction ever. I should say something more something more exciting. I end up saying nothing, and the teacher picks up from there. Oh, that is exciting. No one expected that. Everyone seems to be satisfied even with what little I said, though. A few girls are whispering to each other, throwing glances at me. Could have gone worse. I did think I'm cute. I listen to the teacher as he drones about getting along with letting my gaze sweep across the classroom. I read good. Everyone seems to be listening to him intently, and when he's done, they clap their hands again, which feels like a weird thing to do. The first row girl claps on this round with one hand against her other wrist that ends in a bandage stump. Ooh. Why is it bandage? Did that hand recently come off? It makes me feel a little bad. We're going to be doing some uh, group work today, so that'll give you a chance to talk with everyone. Is that okay with you? Uh, yeah. So I with me. That's good. You can work with Hakamichi. She is the class representative. And also, sometimes she teaches when I'm too hungover. She can explain anything you might want to know. And who else would be able to do that better, right? Uh, I don't know, maybe the teacher? How could I know? The teacher passes out the day's assignments and announces what we'll be working in groups of three. What we will be working in groups of three. Announces that we, that we will be working in groups of three. Fuck! I am dumb. It hits me that I don't know who Hakamichi is. Slow. The teacher seems to catch my helpless expression. Oh, right. Uh, Hakamichi's right there. Shizune Hakamichi. Oh, it's the anime protag girl. As he calls out her name, the cute, bubbly-looking girl with bright pink hair and gold eyes waves her hand at me. 
Take a seat next to her by the window. Why, why is it that every main character always sits by a window in a classroom? Some kind of trope. Hey, I guess you're Hakimichi, right? It's nice to meet you. <laughs> Jesus. What? I'm caught off guard by her laughter. Her beautiful, beautiful laughter. It's nice to meet you too, but... It's nice to meet you too, but I'm not Hakimichi. I'm Misha. This is Hakimichi. Shichan. Fuck. Giggling, Misha points to the girl next to her, the one I saw using sign language before. It looks like she has been staring at me this whole time. She nods once nonchalantly to show that she acknowledges my presence, but only barely. She has short yet carefully neatly brushed hair, a pair of oval-shaped glasses balanced on the tip of a dainty nose, a dark and dark blue eyes that seem to alternate every few seconds between analytical and slightly bored. Uh, it's nice to meet you. Oh, she's a mute. She immediately looks at Misha, who smiles and makes a few quick gestures with her hands. Or she's dead. Hakimichi nods and makes a few gestures of her own. I start to wonder if the teacher was messing with me, saying things like, you'll be able to talk to people, and who better to explain things to you? I can see you're a little confused, right? Right? But I understand why you would. I think... Oof. But I understand why you would think I was Shichan. Shichan is deaf, so I'm the person who translates things back and forth for her. I'm like an interpreter. She says it's nice to meet you too. You're the new student, aren't you? Well, Shichan, of course, he is. If he wasn't, he wouldn't have this fucking dude in my butthole. God damn it. He would have been standing up there for no reason, right? Right? He seems like a very interesting person, doesn't he? We knew there was going to be a new student, but we didn't know you would be here today so soon. Hachan, right? Hachan? Yep, it fits, doesn't it? Uh, did I say it out loud? It's just a surprise. I've never liked that nickname. I don't really see how. It fits. You look just like I imagined. <laughs> yeah, you look just like a Hitchin. I wonder why everyone seems to think so. Hakimichi taps her fingers on the desk to get Misha's attention. They gesture back and forth to each other, doing jutsus and whatnot. Other excitedly, their hands a blur. Misha seems a little overwhelmed. <laughs> er, sorry about that. Shichan wants you to know that she's the class rep, so if there's anything you need to know, you can feel free to ask her. Do you like the school so far? We can show you around a little if you haven't had the time to walk around and familiarize yourself with it. Misha stumbles with the hard word a bit, making it stick out in her otherwise fluid translation. Oh, you know what? If you stumble over words, then it makes me feel better, because I do too. Thanks, that would uh, be pretty helpful. Yeah, I just came, uh, I just kind of came straight to class today. <laughs> That's no good. <laughs> That's no good. You should always try to learn as much as you can about where you're going before you go there. Not just with school, either. Always. Even if it's a trip to the convenience store. Really, Sichan? <laughs> learn about where you're going. I guess I didn't bother to do that, or just didn't care enough to do so. I didn't look forward to this, even if I committed myself to go alone with it half-acidly, but anyway. I don't say anything, and Misha signs something that ends in a shrug. What was that? It seemed like it was about me. I feel like slumping over in my seat. Both of them are smiling, but that shrug hit me unexpectedly deeply. <sighs> Ooh, that shrug, it hit me! You look down. Are you okay? Don't take it the wrong way, please. I hate it when people are afraid to ask questions. That's how people learn things, by asking. Asking for help is perfectly normal, as much as needing help. Stop looking like you just failed a test. Wahahaha! I'm Wario! Alright. Ah, and another thing. You don't have to call Shichan something so formal like Hakimichi or class rap all the time. Just call her Shichan. 
Oh, the music dropped out. That's weird. Ah, okay, maybe that's too casual. Maybe Shizune would be more appropriate. Oh, yeah, she likes that shit. <laughs> okay, that would be a lot easier for me. I feel a lot more at ease, both of them so friendly, so I feel like an idiot for being so apprehensive earlier. Especially about Shizune, who I assumed would be all business, but with her glasses and short hair. Well, she still seems like that, just less so, I guess. Well said, Shizune. Huh? Oh, right, we haven't even touched the assignment. We should start work now, or Shichan will get mad. The assignment is also kind of long, so we should start now if we want to finish it before the end of class. Wahahaha! That too! Shizune glares at the two of us impatiently. I don't need to know sign language, understand that. Okay, okay, I get the message. After class, we can take a walk around the grounds together. It's a nice day today, okay? The assignment is actually very challenging to get through, combining aspects of being both difficult and unnecessarily long, just like my penis. Sorry guys, I, I, I went too long without making a penis joke, so there we go. Still, we finished it a few minutes earlier than anyone else in the class because we're fucking dope, despite our late start. Shizune and Misha are really capable. They're quite different, though. The class rep is as calm and professional, uh, professional as she looks, while Misha is a lot more playful and girlish, not to mention a little more easily distracted. To be Why? Stop texting me. To be honest, the two of them did most of the work. I feel guilty about that. I just stood there and twiddled my thumbs. The clock tower bell rings. Bells ring, signaling the end of the period. Time for lunch. Without knowing what else to do, I follow Misha, who is beckoning me into the hallway down the stairs. We descend even below the lobby where I met Mutu down to the bottom floor. Just like everything in the school, the cafeteria seems too spacious and oddly modern in contrast to the classic exterior. Its big windows open to the courtyard towards the main gate. It's the cafeteria, in case you didn't figure that shit out. Her enthusiastic statement of the obvious makes people around us stare, but Misha doesn't seem to care, so we proceed to the line. That's a rather long list of menu options, which seem great until I realize that many of them are to accommodate students who need special diets. How nice. It almost feels like I'm back at the hospital, eating portions measured with scientific precision to meet the needs of the patients. Pick something at random and follow Shizune to a table sitting opposite of her. As I nibble indifferently at the food I'd rather not eat, Misha pokes me in the side to get my attention and points to Shizune. Shizune is over there doing her jutsus again. I don't understand signs, so the point escapes me. <clears throat> Maybe looking at a person who talks to you is proper and polite. Do you want to know something? What? About anything. We're your guides, so you should ask if there's something. Hmm, I wonder. Ask about the library. Oh yeah, is there a library at, at the, in the school? Lately I've gotten into reading a lot, so I'd like to check it out. Misha gives a kind of frown that makes it clear she doesn't consider reading a healthy hobby, but then picks up her smile again. There is! It's in the second floor! We can show it to you sometime, you big dumb nerd! Thanks. I return to my food while the girls talk between themselves. Misha and Shizune sign back and forth very animatedly, throwing sideway glances at me, but Misha refrains from translating. Maybe they're talking about how ugly I am. I quickly notice a conversation and sign is not enough to fill a silence. We arrive in the classroom early, but we're not the first. That dark-haired girl, whoa, whoa it's Two-Face. Uh, yeah, that dark-haired girl I noticed before is slumped over her desk at the last row. Oh. She jumps a little when Misha crashes into the room with the elegance of a rhino. She shrinks deeper into her seat. I can feel her tension all the way from here, as if she were slowly turning into stone just from our presence. Misha and Shizune either didn't notice or don't mind it as they walk directly past her to their seats and begin to converse. I'm not wondering about her, even when the classroom slowly fills with other students and finally, the teacher. Getting into the rhythm of school feels strange. It's as if my brain remembers how this is done, but my body doesn't. Towards the end of the class, I start yawning and counting the minutes left. God, this dude fucking... His internal monologue is so long. I shouldn't be, the f I shouldn't be this tired on my first day of school. 
or this long-winded. Maybe it's the long time spent in the hospital that made me like this. I'm even feeling physically weak and lifeless. Before long, the final bell rings. School is finally over for the day. Beside me, Misha and Shizune are having a short conversation. After a bit of deliberation, Misha turns to me. Unfortunately, we can't stay and show you around today, Hee-chan. We've got to hurry already, since there's a lot of work for us to do. You'll find your way around here, I'm sure of it. Ah, wait! The teacher said I'd have to see the nurse. Uh, where do I have to go? Is that so? We can at least show you that much. Come on, the nurses have their own building, so we have to go outside. We join the flow of students making their way down the stairwell outside towards the Van Gogh painting, with the girls pointing out other senior classrooms in the same hallway as ours. When we get outside, the girls make their way to the smaller building right next to the school. It's built in the same style, so it looks like it's actually part of the main building. This is the auxiliary building here. There's a lot of official and important stuff inside, like the Yamaku Foundation office and all the nurses' office. They even have a swimming pool for some unknown reason. How is that official? Don't be silly, Chan. It's for physical therapy, of course. And for sweet pool parties. Anyway, all the nursing staff facilities are in there, too. The head nurse's office is on the first floor. You'll be fine from here, right? We'll be going then. See you tomorrow! Yep, thanks. Bye. A whole building for stuff that has nothing to do with the actual education. I guess it's necessary for a place like this. Okay. Ah, oh, God, my nose is itchy, and I have to take a major shit, so yeah, we're going to call it right there. Uh, yeah, this game is definitely a visual novel. Uh, very long-winded. This main character doesn't seem to ever stop thinking about inane bullshit. But uh, yeah, if you guys are interested in where this goes and want me to continue, let me know. Uh, otherwise, I'm probably just going to keep doing other random shit, kind of throwing in at the wall, seeing what sticks. Uh, yeah, you yeah, have a good one. Bye-bye.